Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As ever, I do hope you're well. Now then, uh, today's episode of What I've Learned From concerns, as you've probably gathered, Mr Stevie Ray Vaughan. So let's crack straight on with a look at one of the most important aspects, I think, of his whole playing style, rhythm. Right, many of Stevie's tunes are underpinned by a very, very pronounced swing rhythm. Now let me ex explain just a little bit about that. Uh, basically, instead of splitting the beat into two parts, one and two and and so on, what you're doing is splitting the beat into three parts, triplets essentially, and playing which are counted one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, and so on. And what you're doing is doing a downstroke on the number, on the one for example, and then an upstroke on the a. Ah. So basically that's going to be going one and two and three and like that. Now if that's a little bit kind of cumbersome um, for you to learn that way, then another great way for getting this rhythm into your head is to think of this piece of music. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yes, uh, the theme from the Archers, um, obviously, and it's um, basically got that swing rhythm to it. And all you got to do is maintain pretty much that movement, that <laughs> movement throughout kind of everything you're playing. Really, um, he'll even apply that sort of strumming technique to lead work as we're going to see, or some lead work anyway, as we're going to see later on in the video. Uh, for now though, let's have a look at how you apply that rhythm to um, a rhythm guitar part. We're going to take a look at, first of all, uh, a shuffle pattern. Now what that means is basically any kind of derivative of this old faithful status quo Chuck Berry kind of thing. That kind of thing. Um, what you're going to see next is that sort of thing uh, played, first of all, in a standard kind of non-Stevie Ray Vaughan way that you know plenty of guitar players do, and then you'll see it demonstrated the way Stevie does it, and there's going to be tab on screen and everything, and we'll talk a little bit about it afterwards. Anyway, here it is. Right, so you can see that what I'm doing there is basically on the Stevie version, uh, on the upstrokes, I'm kind of clipping some open strings. So instead of that, I'm going more like that, and immediately it makes it sound more like Stevie. Um, these open strings work because we're doing a blues here in E, which means that we've got an E minor pentatonic as kind of the, the safety net catch-all scale. And all of those open strings are part of that scale, so that's how come it works. If you're in another key, then you're probably not going to get away with that quite as much. Um, but what he would do in these circumstances, we're going to look at something now that's as far away from E as possible. We're going to be doing a kind of a C minor sort of thing. Um, what he would do then would be to kind of put muted upstrokes in uh, and some downstrokes as well, basically. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, a riff from an old uh, Kenny Burrell tune called Chitlin's Con Carney that Stevie covered. And First of all, I'll play it uh, clean, or sort of as tabbed, um, and then I'll do it sort of with a more kind of Stevie kind of feel to it. Uh, if you look in the description box below, you'll see kind of tabs for this and, and those shuffle patterns as well, um, so you can just download that PDF and peruse it at your leisure. Anyway, here it is, Chitlin's Con Carney, 
non stevified and then stevified. <laughs> Right, so you can see on the second version everything's much looser and there's much more of that kind of thing going on. Now a good exercise that you can try to develop your skill for doing that is just take a note say on the fourth string. I'm going to use the fifth fret on the fourth string. And what you want to be able to do is strum all of the strings but only hear that note. A bit like this. And then try other strings. Here's the fifth string. And you can hear that that extra percussiveness that uh, is there as a result of, you know, doing the that as part of the whole um, method of playing just lends it that sort of gritty, bluesy edge to it. Um, somebody mentioned to me the other day when I was talking about doing a Stevie Ray Vaughan video that his playing is relicked and I really like that analogy you know when you get a guitar obviously that's been relicked it's it's kind of a bit rough around the edges and a bit tatty at the seams but just enough to make it cool and that's exactly how I kind of perceive Stevie's uh, playing it's it's rough around the edges but just enough um, and it takes a great amount of control and skill to just dial the right amount of roughness in like that. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much the whole rhythmic aspect of Stevie's playing and as I say you'll find him using that kind of approach on lots and lots of his lead guitar stuff as well. Which brings me to what we're going to look at next. Uh, some of Stevie's lead guitar ideas. Um, we'll start off with his approach to playing double stops. Right, you'll find double stops, which basically are just pairs of notes played together, in the blues guitar playing of pretty much anybody who's ever played blues on the guitar. So what I want to look at here is I want to focus on the things that, to my ears, are kind of uniquely Stevie, or certainly things that I learned first from listening to Stevie's music. So let's kick off with this one. Okay, so here we are in close-up. Uh, the first double stop idea that we're going to look at begins with the B note. We're in E minor here, or E minor pentatonic for a blues in E. So we're going to start on this note here, the B note at the f uh, 14th fret on the 5th string. And we're going to pair that up with the B note an octave higher. And when I say pair it up, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be playing the low note in each pair with the pick and the higher note in each pair, which will always be this B note here, the high B note, with the third finger of my picking hand. It's basically a hybrid picking technique. So, um, just take this simple little run starting on this B note here. Like that, nothing particularly um, earth shattering about that. But if I, alongside each of those notes, put that high B note in, we get something like this, which is very, very recognizably Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, he would also do this on the top strings as well. Another good example, I think I used this one in the piece earlier, um, would be to. Uh, rather than going for that octave pairing there, he would start off with a sixth between the, in this case, the G note in, um, rather, on the third string, and the E note on the top string. So again, you're going to be barring those strings there, just like we were for that early one, uh, barring these uh, three strings here, 
and let's say I play a little run, maybe including the flattened fifth blues note, um, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is play a little note, uh, a little run rather, like this. That. Simple as that. And alongside each one of those notes, again using the hybrid picking technique, I'm going to pluck the uh, high E note on the first string. And that's going to give that kind of thing, which does sound quite Stevie Ray Vaughan. Right, so that's those two ideas for um, using double stops. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of others. Right, if you look at that um, diagram of the minor pentatonic position number one, which you can see in the corner of the screen, um, what you need to do to get this next double stop idea is add in this note, which would be in E minor pentatonic, that would be the second fret on the second string, a C sharp note, basically. So we're going to add that in, and we're going to pair that up with the G note on the third fret, first string. Okay, gives a very, very dissonant, tense sounding interval known as a tritone. Um, and basically, all you got to do to uh, create a, a really cool sounding bluesy double stop idea out of that is just take this note that you've added in, the C sharp, and bend it slightly sharp. We're not even taking it up as much as one fret's worth. Uh, we're just kind of taking it up a quarter tone almost. Like that. And if you um, want an example of where Stevie used this, go right to the end of Texas Flood, almost the uh, final lick in that tune, uh, which is played in G, so we'll transpose it up to G, um, is exactly that lick. It's that, okay? And then he does another one after it, which we're going to look at in a moment. But that is a great way of um, just adding a little bit of gritty, dissonant tension um, into into a blues lick and Stevie used to do it all the time. Right, let's have a look at this other one then. Um, what we need to do is whatever um, chord we're playing over, and let's imagine this is happening over an E7 in a E blues, find the uh, fifth of that chord, so that's going to be a B note, and we're going to find that on the top E string, here it is. Um, then go to the, in fact that's at the 7th fret, go to the 8th fret on the uh, G string, sorry the B string, a G note on the B string in this case. And again what we're going to do is we're going to bend that G note, which is the minor third of the E minor pentatonic, we want to bend it slightly sharp towards the G sharp, which is the note that's actually in the E7 chord. Um, going to sound like this. You'll also hear that very lick on the beginning of um, Rambling On My Mind um, from the John Mill Eric Clapton Blues Breakers album. But I heard it first um, via Stevie, so that's why I'm including it here. Um, so yeah, if you take that idea Again, a, a massively Stevie kind of idea um, So here's, I mentioned the, the, the examples of this in Texas Flood earlier uh, Here's how Texas Flood actually finishes It starts off with that first kind of idea we looked at a moment ago then goes to the second idea and you can resolve it quite nicely onto the root note of whatever chord you're on there just by going to that fret in relation to these two so in G that's like the 10th fret, 11th fret, 12th fret so the end of Texas Flood goes like this
and there you have the very recognisable finale of that tune. So, um, as I said earlier, many blues guitarists use double stops, you know, the kind of... That kind of thing. But it's these ideas, um, those that I demonstrated earlier up here, using the... That kind of thing. And, the, and these two that we've just been through now, that to my ears are uniquely Stevie Ray Vaughan-esque. If you're interested in this double stop kind of stuff then you'll find a link in the description box below to a full lesson on how you can get a little bit more into that. So that's um, essentially what I learned about using double stops from the music of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay next up we're going to take a look at how you can use something as simple as an upstroke to make any lick sound just that little bit more gritty. Okay this is just a, a quick mention for this because it's uh, ground we've covered kind of already. Um, basically I mentioned earlier that Stevie would often use a strumming technique to play a single note riff. Um, so if you were to take a, a riff something like that, Stevie would probably have played it like that. Okay, And this, as I say, is kind of an extension of that. What we're going to do here is begin that with a muted upstroke rake, like that. I'm using the underside of this finger to mute those strings there to land on this note that I'm actually pressing down. And if you apply that to this riff, you get something like... And Stevie would use that technique as a way of beginning pretty much any riff or lick that he, that he wanted to. He could even do it on a bend, which I'll, I'll try and do now. So I'm going to try and bend this note here um, as Stevie might have done it. That kind of thing. There you go. Um, just that muted upstroke rate is a way of to my ears it all makes, almost makes it sound like the guitar is just spitting the note out at you. It really adds that um, venomous attitude to it and uh, it was a big part of his playing. So there you have it, the muted upstroke rig. There it is. And that ladies and gentlemen pretty much concludes this little mini lesson about what I've learned from the music of Stevie Ray Vaughan. I do hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting, inspiring maybe. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and that way you'll get to see more videos like this. If you live on Teesside in the northeast of England and you would like some tailored one-to-one -one guitar tuition, any style, beginner to advanced level, then get in touch with me via the details at the end of this lesson. Um, even if you don't live on Teesside, get in touch anyway because I also now do Skype lessons. And just before I go, you know what comes next, don't you? The obligatory mention for the two albums that I've got out at the moment as you've probably gathered if you've seen any of these other videos they are called handles for forks and the whiskey made me do it both of them are full of bluesy shreddy instrumental melodic rock and blues guitar playing so what's not to like there quite frankly uh, they're available across all major platforms so check them out there's a link in the description box below to help you do exactly that and with that i'll leave you till next time and wish you a good day bye for now folks